Hey guys, it is Tyler here back once again with another video. Today I wanted to talk about the Game of the Year awards that are next week. James did a video of his own talking about the Game of the Year awards. I thought I'd do one myself. So I'm going to go through real quick the nominations for Game of the Year and then break down my thoughts on everything. So first of all, we've got God of War nominated. Great game, awesome game. Uh, one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, the next, Red Dead Redemption 2, amazing. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is there. Uh, Celeste. What the fuck is that? I actually haven't seen that. Wait, what actually is Celeste? Hang on. I'm just going to turn on my Xbox. What the hell is Celeste? Hang on, I'm just going to turn on my Xbox. Check the marketplace. See, see what this is. Is this on Xbox? Hang on. Let me Google it. Let me check this. Celeste. It's a platformer. 10 out of 10 on Steam. IGN, 10 out of 10. Polygon, 8 out of 10. Holy shit. Holy shit. And it's a side scroll. It's a platformer. Like a... Huh. It's on Xbox. It's on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4. Maybe I'll go play this first. Cool. Little pixel side scroll. Cool, yeah. Pretty cute. Pretty cute. That's pretty cool, I guess. Cleaning a ghost hotel. Oh, Jesus Christ! The ghost is chasing me. The ghost is chasing me. Fucking run, Madeline. Fucking run. Oh, for fuck's sake. I've died 117 times at this goddamn checkpoint. I'm so close to the top. Does this suck? Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> they were, they were together. They were, they needed each other. <laughs> okay, maybe my reaction wasn't that dramatic. But when looking at the landscape of AAA high budget video game productions that have released in 2018, it certainly caught my eye seeing an indie platformer nominated for Game of the Year. So I looked into it, purchased and played Celeste to completion, and I just felt compelled to make a video on it. Celeste is an indie pixel platformer developed and published by Matt Makes Games, creator of 2013's Towerfall. It released in January of 2018 and completely went under my radar with its stellar reviews and large fan base. It wasn't until I saw its Video Game Awards nomination that I had even heard of the game and knew that I had to look into it. When you have games like God of War, Spider-Man and Red Dead Redemption 2 up for Game of the Year, then you see this little pixel platformer's name next to them, there has to be a reason for it. There has to be something about this game, right? Now don't get me wrong, I don't play a whole lot of platformers anymore, though I definitely have played my fair share and love the genre and style, though it's a rarity that I sit down and play them to completion. In fact, the last platformer I played all the way through was Playdead's 2016 game, Inside, over 12 months ago. So again, it's probably a once a year or more occurrence I play a new platformer all the way through, but my history with them goes back to the first ever game I owned and played, the original Duke Nukem. So platformers are the beginning of my gaming life, and I still enjoy them now. So jumping into a game like Celeste was something I don't often do, and something totally refreshing and nostalgic for me as a gamer in 2018. So how did I enjoy Celeste? Is it special? And is it really a Game of the Year candidate? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. Celeste is a story of a young girl, Madeline, climbing the mountain, Celeste. It has a prologue and eight subsequent chapters. It took me a total of nine to ten hours to complete all eight chapters, and I had an absolute blast. The game doesn't just have simple and innovative level design, it is riddled with challenge that is balanced between difficult and achievable. Its level design is constantly growing the further you progress, and just when you think there can't be any more to this game, the next chapter gives you new challenges and gameplay options that you never thought possible in a game that only allows you to run, jump, dash and climb. 
It's a platformer that challenges the genre's storytelling style, actually attempting, and succeeding in my opinion, in dealing with complex issues like anxiety and exploring them through a fun cast of characters and the merging of an abundance of platformer gameplay mechanics with fantastical world building and a beautiful soundtrack. As I mentioned, the gameplay itself is quite simple. Your movement is pretty much limited to a jump and a dash, with the ability to of course walk and temporarily hold onto walls to climb. But ultimately, it is Madeline's dash that is the centerpiece of the gameplay and the level design works around it. It is actually incredible how this game is designed. Each level brings completely unique and new challenges to the game mechanics. It doesn't stay the same and then introduce new elements throughout the game that build on each other necessarily. Each level has its own environment, its own obstacles and challenges to the simple mechanics the game has to offer. It's truly remarkable and gets better the further into the game you go in my opinion. It's a near perfect balance between simplicity and complexity. The art style and soundtrack keep it so fantastically grounded. To purposely have a pixelated style of Celeste lets you know it knows what it is. It's not an indie game trying to disguise itself as a AAA title, such as a game like A Way Out does. It knows it's an indie platformer, and it not only celebrates that fact, it attempts to dive deeper and explore more opportunities that other platformers are not willing to take. The story of Celeste is one that took me some time to even figure out what it was trying to say. Because it comes across as such a basic cartoon style story, you don't expect there to be anything deeper. But the further you go into the game, you realise that this game is exploring deeper themes and ideas. Tackling anxiety through the actions of climbing a mountain. Facing down the inner turmoil in a physical sense. It takes the story and themes and then combines it with the gameplay mechanics and the level design itself. Everything this game does is a complement to itself. Even as I write this, the more I think about it and the way the game functions, the more I'm impressed by it. It's more than just a challenging platformer. It's more than just a fun, indie, artsy game. It explores intimately complex themes through simple gameplay, simple plot, challenging level design, and somehow balances them all perfectly. When I first saw Celeste up for Game of the Year, I expected an average indie platformer. The critics trying to look hipster or cool were hyping up way beyond what it deserved. I asked the question at the start of this video, does this game deserve to be considered for Game of the Year? The answer is absolutely yes. Celeste is one of, if not the best platformer I've ever played. It gave me everything I love about platformers, which is to play something simple that challenges the hell out of me and it really is challenging. Just like all games I grew up playing, it just brought me back to why I play games in the first place, because I like difficult challenges of them. While Celeste also gave me characters, story, an art style and soundtrack that I just adore, which is just a bonus. I wanted to make this into a video to act as a sort of review for this game, while also informing people that Celeste definitely deserves to be a contender for Game of the Year this year, as well as a call to action to say to people, if these are the types of games you enjoy playing once in a while, go and buy this game, support it, so that developers like Matt Makes Games can keep developing beautiful platformers and indie titles just like Celeste.